I am here today to make an appeal to you. I'm here to, today to make a heartfelt appeal to you. It's not even for me. It's an appeal for a friend of mine. And you see, this is the only reason I accepted to be standing here today and talking to you. It's because my friend is not doing well. And I believe, I know, that you know my friend. If you don't know my friend right now, I'm convinced you will meet my friend. And in fact, at the end of my talk, I'm going to introduce you to my friend, if you don't know him. You see, my friend is distressed. My friend is confused. My friend is very, very having a turmoil in his brain. Loads of questions. What if this? What if that? And it is going on and on and on in his mind. And at this particular point in time, the only state I can define my friend is in, he's in a state of confusion. And because he's my friend, I'm very worried for my friend. You would have been too. Because I'm worried not only for him, I'm worried for his loved ones. I'm worried for all those that he interact with directly or indirectly. And this is why I'm going to introduce to you my friend and then give you the message that I want you to carry for my friend. So let me introduce you to my friend. You see, my friend is called We. Okay. So let's just imagine that's my friend. He's called We. And like any one of us, he's got a heart, he's got a brain, He's got nerves, he's got arteries, you just don't see his picture there. And my friend has been brought up in an environment where, for him, family life is crucial. The values are the driving force of any thought and any behavior. So his whole life, for my friend we, is based on those strong pillars, his values. And even when he works, well, he works based on those values. He, he, he's been taught respect. Well, he will deal with people in a respectful way. He's been taught that you need to trust people. Well, he will deal with people in that way. And that's how he is at work. When he plays, he plays from his heart. He loves, he has fun, he loves it, and he enjoys the moment that he's having. And he plays with the kids, he plays football, he plays tennis, he plays badminton, he plays dominoes, you name it, he plays it. So he has fun in having this interaction and using who he is and the values that he has within himself to connect and depict that in his behavior. And the reason why I am worried for my friend We is because we is now being challenged. And the challenge that we is facing is that the digital age is now disrupting the way my friend we works, plays, communicates, and even think. He is now in an environment, in a working environment, where he just cannot understand how people who are just a few desks away from him will write him a mail, which might even take them longer than crossing those few meters and coming to see him and saying, hi there, you know, can we chat about this? He just doesn't understand that. And my friend, we on the other hand, because we are in a global village, he is told, you know what, even if your customer is sitting in New York, in Singapore, in Australia, you need to understand your customer. And you know, a VC meeting, you need to have that. So now we is asking himself, hang on there, that guy sitting just across there, I might not even see him for the whole day, he says good morning to me by mail, yet, on the other hand, those who are far away from me, mm -mm, I've got to see them. Now, when it comes to playing, just imagine, we is no longer playing with people. 
he's now playing with devices. And you know, any game that he wants, he can play with that. The only issue is he cannot have interaction. How can feelings come across? I've got a son, he plays PS4, and he plays for people across the globe, which is fantastic. But the problem is, who is that person he's playing with? What is the background of that person? What are the values of that person? Now, you see, my friend, we just doesn't get this at this point. And the other one is the way that he communicates. You see, recently, my friend we spent weeks on a report. And I bet you a lot of you sitting here will relate to that. So he spent weeks on that report, submits the report to his line manager, and he gets a mail the next day saying, not bad. So my friend is sitting there and thinking, hmm, what does that not bad mean? Does it mean not bad? Or does it mean not bad? So my friend, because he's somebody that, you know, he talks to people and he needs to get this feeling of what's happening. So he goes off and talks to the line manager. And thank God for him, it was more of a not bad than the not bad. And now just imagine if he hadn't done that. We all, most of us work in this crowd here. Just vision that, visualize that in your working environment. Conflict, misunderstanding, relationships of trust broken, and I'll let you guess the rest. Now, my friend Wee is thinking day and night, how is this working? What is this contradiction here that is happening? And we know, like we just heard, there are some professions that will not exist 10 years down the line. Uber is going to be self-driven taxi. That's what it's going to be. So people are going to be away. So what's happening now is, I hate to do that, but I've got to. Now what's happening is, I have come up with a winning formula. And this is going to be the winning formula that I would want you to go away with for my friend, we. When you will see him. And the winning formula is, I love acid. Now it's not about throwing acid on your line manager. I love acid, it's just for you to remember those words that I'm going to be sharing with you so that you can share it with my friend. The very first one is interpersonal skills. You see, even in the digital age, nothing replaces the face-to-face -face relationship and connection that we can have with people. Never. Otherwise, our life partner would be a robot, God forbid, right? And, I mean, just imagine, we would be working with, uh, uh, with devices. It doesn't work. And this reminds me of, I had a friend. He used to call me for my birthday. He could have sent me an emoji, and his emoji doesn't match my emoji, okay? Right? But he called me, and as soon as I pick up the phone, it would be, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. Now, tell me. How, in the digital age, this wonderful sound of hearing somebody's voice saying happy birthday to you can be replaced by an emoji? I don't want you to answer to me. The second one is the heart. Please take your right hand. Please do that for me. Take your right hand, put it on your heart. It's there, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Sure, it's there, otherwise you wouldn't be sitting here. Uh, you see, we all have the heart. Now learn to talk to our heart. This connects with this. And then it gets us to do things. If I'm not doing things from here, my brain is confused. I'm feeling something. My brain is telling me to do something, but physically I'm doing something else. Now can you imagine how, why my friend we is confused? Because instead of following his heart, he is following what he's seeing around. Somebody said to me recently, but Vimi, how do you translate love from a, 
personal life into a professional environment. So we had this wonderful discussion that love cannot exist in a professional environment. Well, I've got news for you. If love in the personal life is written L-O-V-E, in the professional life it's written C-O-M-M-I-T-M-E-N-T. That's what it is. It's just the same thing. It's just written differently. And some people, you know, at times we talk about this in the professional environment and we talk about passion, engagement, but that's what it is. And we are passionate about what we do. When we are passionate about what we do, just watch the result. I'm lucky enough. I am doing, I'm working, and I'm doing something for people that I just love doing. I cannot imagine doing anything else in my whole life. I've been doing this for the last 17 years. And what it is, is I love impacting people's lives. And that's what I do for a living. If I didn't believe in my ability to do it and that this is the place for me, I would quit. So listen to our heart. I was watching Oprah Winfrey recently, and she said the same thing, and she has the same advice. So it is not new. Whether we are in the digital age or not, our heart is still there. It will be there for the next 15 years if we are alive. And so follow the heart. Follow your heart. Please tell my friend that. The other one is the A starting for the acid. Adaptability. Um, I hate to say this, but I started work when the huge mobile phone just came on board. So I've been working for a long, long number of years. And yes, I started when I was 10, but that's another story. Uh, but it is just to say that all the way I have, I've had to adapt myself to the environment. That is not to say to forget who I am. And I hate to use this analogy, but that's the best one I can think of, is like the chameleon. I'm so scared of them, so why are you, am I using that as an analogy? But that's another story again. You see, a chameleon is, they will change the color depending on the situation. But the chameleon will still be the chameleon. It will never become a lion, an elephant, or whatever it is. So that's adaptability. And that calls for rethinking, which is good. The only problem that my friend we is having, there is an overthinking going on. And I'm going to illustrate that when I get to the point D with you. The next one is communication. Well, you see, I just told you the story with my friend about the not bad and the not bad. Now, we all here, we listen to music. And we've got all sorts of music that we listen to. Some of us, we might prefer Sega. Some of us, we might prefer the, uh, you know, rap or uh, rock and roll or whatever it is. But it's still music. Now, just imagine, instead of listening to that music, putting your earphone and listening wonderfully to that music, somebody will say, was, was to say to you, here is the script, listen to the music. Just doesn't work. And that's communication. Is because we need to hear the intonation, the passion that is coming out. What are the feelings that are coming across in what the person is saying to me? And excuse me, it doesn't come across in a mail. Because I read what I want to read, you will read what you want to read. But when we are face to face, over and above hearing what you're saying, I am hearing the emotions that come to me. That's communication, and that's true communication based on the values that we have. The other one is the I in the asset. That's initiatives. Somebody said very rightly, growth only happens outside our comfort zone. If we do not take initiative to step out of the comfort zone, we're going to be stuck. We're going to be so upset with ourselves. We're going to have all these questions, what if, what if, what if, what if going on in our mind? Take the initiatives, and I love this quote, and I make that a motive for myself, is the one who risks nothing, gets nothing, and I've added one to it, is you die nothing. We did not come here to die nothing. We all have a purpose in life. And by taking the initiative, we get to our purpose. We can call it dream, we can call it vision, we can call it whatever, but it's our purpose in life. 
And by taking initiatives, we do that. You've taken an initiative to come here this morning. The last one, the D, is the diversity. I am lucky enough to interact with the various generations in the working environment locally as well as regionally and in Africa. And I'll tell you what, it's the same. You know what is the same? We are, let's say we are from a generation X, for instance, and we come across and we meet people from the other generations. And we start saying, why don't they understand that? They should be doing that. They don't do that. They shouldn't do that. And we are stressing ourselves for nothing. I was running a workshop recently, and we had somebody who was a millennial, and we had somebody who was a Gen X. And the Gen X interpreted the fact that a millennial asks question as a disrespect to the elders. And the person who was a millennial was ah, shocked. And because they had this conversation sharing, and they, they both then realized it's about embracing the diversity that we have around us. It's not about saying, you should be like me, you should be like that. No. It's about embracing the diversity. And diversity in this digital age is magnificent. It's beautiful. We've got it everywhere. So, in fact, it's being given to us on a plateau. But you know what the unfortunate thing is for my friend we? My friend we is not seizing that. My friend we is stuck in a little zone. And whatever is going around him, he's seeing that as, you know what, you need to come my way, you need to come my way. Instead of asking himself those questions about, how can I interact differently? How can I use my passion to connect with that person? How can I adapt to that situation? How can I communicate differently? How can I take the initiative to step out of this? And how can I embrace the diversity? And that's all it boils down to. And before I introduce you to my friend, I want to tell you that everything that I've been telling you up there, the I love asset, is something that I personally can vouch for. I've been in the working environment for 25 years, and I've worked in Europe, in Africa, and in Mauritius. And I can tell you, I've had to harshly work on myself to adapt to the environment, to adapt to everything that is going around, use my interpersonal skills and my passion. And I know a lot, there are a few people sitting in this room whom I work with, and I want to thank you for that. But what I want to say, and they will vouch for that, is I can never work with somebody if I haven't developed a relationship with that person. Because I can only work with somebody if I trust that person. Now, come on, tell me trust is a value that doesn't exist in the digital age. It exists, it has always existed, and it will always exist. So before I end, I'm going to introduce you to my friend. I know you were told not to, to put your phone on, uh, to switch your phone off, but knowing how that instruction normally gets followed, I know all your phones are either on silent, not even on airplane mode, right? So can I ask you to please get your phone out? And if I can request you to please, once you've got your phone, please go onto your camera. And reverse it, and the person that you see there is my friend, we. Thank you very much. <laughs>